if you want to provision cloud resources such as AWS Instance EC2 or S3 Bucket or Google Cloud Bucket, then you need to use Crossplane. Crossplane is an open source project which is maintained by the community. I already have installed EKS cluster where I'll be installing this Crossplane and I'll be showing you a step-by-step -step instruction as how to do it. Plus I will also be provisioning an EC2 instance and S3 Bucket from within Kubernetes by using kubectl command. And the solution which would enable me to do that is called as Crossplane. So as I said, I already have installed the EKS cluster and I already have installed kubectl and uh, hemp CLI on my client. So, and I would also recommend you to install the latest version of kubectl plus also use the version 3.8.2 for hemp CLI because any version greater than this hemp version um, is known to cause some issues. Okay, now let's delve into this. So my, uh, let's quickly check my EKS cluster is reachable. So I'm just, sorry, it's just a typo. QCTL get NS. This is going to show me some of the namespaces which are running. It's a brand new cluster. So all the default stuff is there, so which is good. Now let me set a variable to store my AWS account ID, which I'll be using in few of the files. Now that's done. After this, I'm going to set up some of the IAM permissions. I'll be creating a role policy and a permission boundary so that Crossplane should be able to talk to my AWS EKS. So first of all, I'm going to set a permission boundary. A permission boundary is an advanced feature for using a managed policy to set the maximum permission that an identity-based policy can grant to any IAM entity. And in order to implement that, all I need to do is to create an IAM policy. So as you can see, this permission dash boundary.json is a file from where this policy is getting its data. And this file is present in my GitHub repository and the link is in the video description. So that's done. After that, I'm going to implement the OIDC provider. And as you know, EKS supports using OpenID Connect or OIDC provider as a method to authenticate users to the EKS cluster. I'm also going to set the permission boundary on, which is basically the policy on, which we have just created. After that, I'm going to build a trust relationship with, for the role. So this is a policy which we will be using with this role. Now let's create the role for the AWS provider for Crossplane. So in Crossplane, every cloud has its own provider. So for AWS, we have AWS provider and that AWS provider needs this role. And if you, and don't worry about the commands, they're all in my uh, GitHub repository and you can copy paste from there. So once role is created, I'm going to attach an IAM policy with that role. For now, I'm granting this policy admin access, but in production, you should be using any uh, a restrictive policy. So when, once that's done, let's also annotate the provider. So as you can see, I am using here AWS provider.yaml, um, which is basically the provider file supplied by AWS. Let me quickly show you what, it, what this file looks like. So as you can see, this is the typical Kubernetes manifest where we are, we have API version, we have provider, and then the name of this AWS provider, which we will be using later on when we would, uh, in, uh, we would like to provision some resources in AWS. So this is good. Now, up till this point, our IAM setup is ready. Now, after that, we need to implement the Kubernetes side of things with the HEM. First thing we need to do is to create a namespace. So namespace is done. Next, I am going to add a HEM repo and update it. The HEM repo should already be added. And then this is done. HEM repos are updated. After that, let's actually install the HEM repo for Crossplane. So this takes a bit of a time to install and then um, this shows status it deploys, but I have seen that sometimes even if the status is deployed, it takes a bit of a time. 
um, to deploy all the resources for crossplane and the way we can check that everything is ready for this uh, provider for the generic provider and also for the AWS provider is by using this command so it is condition met so it seems it's all good so if the condition is met then we can go ahead and install our AWS provider with the file I showed you previously AWS provider is installed. Let me clear the screen. Once that's done, we will also install the configuration for this AWS provider. I'm just again checking if the condition is met. It's not, so we just need to wait for a bit. Sometimes it, it takes a bit of a time. So if you run it a uh, few times or wait for 30, 40 seconds, it should be good. So meanwhile, it does it. Let me show you um, what AWS provider config file looks like. So if I go to AWS provider config file, you can see again, this is a similar API version uh, for the cross plane. And it is still in beta. And then we have provider config. And this config is for the provider AWS provider config. And if you remember, I showed you that this is the same name which we used in the actual provider file. Once that's done, we can also use some credentials. I'm using the default ones, but we can inject these credentials from any um, secret manager like AWS secret manager or even from HashiCorp's vault. And um, as this cross plane is still evolving, so I'm hoping that they will be adding more and more ways to inject the identity and credentials here. So this is what uh, AWS provider config looks like. Now let's go back and check if our condition has met or not. It is still not there, so we just have to wait, unfortunately. So that will induce a bit of a delay, but that is fine. We can wait for it. And um, so this basically what is happening is that it is using some custom resource definition um, for cross plane. So custom resource definition or CRDs extend the Kubernetes functionality and they enable us to um, create and install our own resources. So that is what it is doing because cross plane is extending the functionality of Kubernetes to not only orchestrate the container but also to provision the resources so let's check one more time um, how it is doing okay at last so the condition is met which is great now we can go ahead and install the config which i showed you earlier and we cannot run this config file before the condition is met so that is why we had to Okay, so this is nice, condition is met. So up till this point, the installation of cross plane on EKS is complete. Now, what we need to do is to go ahead and provision the resources. So let's check how, can, how we can provision an EC2 instance. So as you can see, this is an EC2 file. Again, this file is enabling us to provision an EC2 instance through cross plane. And if you look, this is, typical manifest file in YAML, which we see for any other Kubernetes resource like deployment pod uh, and service. So we have API version, we have kind instance, metadata is, uh, the name is sample instance, provider, we are using region for Sydney region, and this is a AMI I'm using, instance type and EBS uh, volume information, and then, this is where I'm using the name of the AWS provider, which I set in the AWS provider config file. So all I need to do is to use kubectl apply dash f and ec2 java. So once we run this command, it says created. Now let's get this instance. The resource name is uh, instance, sorry, kubectl instance. So when I say that kubectl get instance, it, it is showing me uh, that it's not ready, it's not synced. When we say sync, it 
in simple words it means that the kubernetes api through crossplane is still talking to aws api to provision the instance and then when it is able to sync it is it is true and when that instance is in running state it shows the ready as running and i have seen from practice that it takes around two to five minutes sometimes to get it provisioned let's check it again it's still provisioning we can even go ahead and describe this resource okay so it says that it has successfully requested creation of external resource and the next event is that it is still unable to update because it is still waiting for AWS API to respond. Let me clear this and then again, let me get this instance. Okay, as you can see, now it says think true, false is ready. Let me also show you what it looks like in the console. So if I go to AWS console, and if I refresh it, as you can see, we have this instance is running straight, right? Okay, cool. Now, if I go back to my terminal window and I do get instance again, it is still showing me false. So let's wait for it. It is still waiting for AWS to come back and let it know that the instance is ready. So, we, so, so see, it's not true. So both things are true. So instance is done. Now, the beauty of Kubernetes is that it always strives to have a desired state. So now let's delete this instance and see from here in Kubernetes and then see what AWS does. So just like we created this instance, we'll say delete. Uh, delete dash ec2 dot shovel. So as soon as I run it, it says deleted here and now let's see what AWS says. <coughs> Sorry, so let me refresh it again. And as you can see, I'll just remove this. It says shutting down. So as soon as I remove it from my terminal, AWS also, uh, sorry, Kubernetes also sent uh, the API call to AWS and AWS deleted it. And this is all the magic of cross plane. So we, uh, so as soon as I deleted uh, this instance, which means I changed the desired state, it also got changed in AWS. So this was, uh, this is how we create or provision EC2 instance from Crossplane in EKS. Now also let's check an example of S3. So with this S3 YAML file, all I'm doing is creating a bucket kind or bucket resource, and I'm giving it a name, and then um, region, ACL, and this is the important part where I'm giving it the provider as AWS. So all we need to do is to simply run it, like kubectl apply dash f as 3.gml. So it says it's created, let's get this resource and see what it does. As you can see, both are ready and true. The bucket was created. Let's also check what it says in the events of this resource. There you go. It has successful, uh, successfully requested and updated it. So this is how you create it. And same way, we can also delete this. It's deleted and not only the resource in kubernetes has been deleted it is also deleted in the aws so now you can see that not only we can use kubernetes for container orchestration we can also use it to provision resources in the cloud now if you think about it we don't have to have a different set of pipeline or different resources uh, or different technologies for infrastructure provisioning we can have an end-to-end -end solution for infra provisioning and container or orchestration within the Kubernetes. I hope this helps. If you have any questions or feedback, please put them in the comments. Thank you very much.